Welcome back friends. In previous video discussion we have talked about uh, the 5 prime capping and what is 5 prime capping and the general view of 5 prime capping. Now in this particular video we will be talking about uh, the mechanism of 5 prime capping. So how uh, the nucleotide uh, sequence guanine is added to the 5 prime end of the producing uh, mRNA. So if we again draw our picture so the picture will something look like this. So if we are having this DNA and from this DNA we are producing this mRNA. So suppose this is the part of the mRNA. This is the 5 prime end. So 5 prime end is this and say this is the pol 2 or RNA polymerase 2 which is sitting and continuously synthesizing the mRNA. During this time modifications must happen to this 5 prime end. This is called the capping. So we'll be discussing about this cap zero structure because this is the most common. Now let us look at the mechanism and the enzymes that are involved into this process. So let us say, uh, say three phosphates are there, and we are having a nucleotide which is X. Now between the nucleotide X and Y, we are having another phosphate. So let us draw this in different color. Let us draw X and Y in blue and then say this Y is further synthesizing so I am not uh, bother about making what is next to the Y so it is still synthesizing okay so this if we represent the nucleotide growing mRNA nucleotide sequence like that so it's an mRNA sequence now this 5 prime end of the mRNA which is being synthesized so this is the 5 prime, this is towards the 3 prime and it is synthesizing in this direction. We need to modify this first, first 5 prime. Okay, for this modification we know that guanosine triphosphate is required. So guanosine triphosphate will be added. So if we make an arrow and let's draw this. So in the very first place what is happening in this reaction is that we need to cleave two phosphate, uh, sorry, you need to cleave one phosphate from this terminal end. Because remember, I have talked to you before that this guanosine triphosphate, which is just added, it is also having three phosphates. But two of those phosphates are released, and one of the phosphates that is present in the 5' end is released. Then what we get is two from here, one from this GTP remaining. Now those phosphates will attach with each other. So three phosphates ultimately we can find. So remember just go back to the cap uh, detail structure you can find the three phosphate between these two terminals. So the first base and the G uh, or base uh, guanosine right. There is three phosphate present. Now here also for the cleaving out of this one phosphate the terminal phosphate from the 5 prime end we require an enzyme and the enzyme is called uh, it is called nucleotide triphosphatase so it's called nucleotide triphosphatase it's called nucleotide triphosphatase and this nucleotide triphosphatase will cleave one phosphate out from this place okay so it will cleave this out from so one phosphate is released so now what we get we are end up with two phosphates are there, one middle phosphate, and we are having this conventional this X and Y, and then we are having this three prime. So we are having a structure like that. Okay, clear, right? One phosphate is clipped out. Sorry. After this step, we need to add the guanosine base. Okay, so we need GTP. So after this stage. We need to provide GTP. So we are having guanosine. Along with guanosine, we are having C phosphate groups. Now, again, during uh, the attachment of nucleotides, what is happening? Remember, the attachment of nucleotides. So if we are having base 1, so this is, uh, sorry, this is the nucleotide 1, and this is having uh, phosphates, and we are having uh, so it is added towards the three prime end. So so the growing chain. So this is the growing chain. 
and this is having a nucleotide number N and it is having a 3 prime hydroxyl and this is a 5 prime phosphate this is nu this nucleotide is to be added to the 3 prime end of the growing chain right because the nucleotides that we are doing it's from 5 prime towards 3 prime okay so what happens is that this hydroxyl group it is acting like a nucleophile it will attack this phosphate and these two phosphates will be released so ultimate result is inorganic phosphates pyrophosphates are released and as a result this N will be attached to this N1 and this is how the whole thing will go on right so this is simply the recapitulation you all know this basic things now in this case what we will be seeing we are having three phosphates now this is a 5 prime like phosphate now this can be added to this so basically in general terms 5 prime phosphate will engage with the 3 prime hydroxyl to make the phosphodiester bond but in this case we can see 5 prime phosphate will be engaging with 5 prime phosphate to make a bond so that's why remember i've talked to you before i've told you before that two 5 prime are involved instead of 1 5 and 1 3 okay so here this phosphate must be added. this this guanosine base must be added so for adding this we not uh, this is not a job of the polymerase enzymes right because polymerase can only add phosph uh, nucleotides via the linkage 5 prime 3 prime so for this unconventional linkage we won't require polymerase or rather we can tell that polymerase will not be able to do that so we need another type of enzyme and the enzyme which is utilized in this case is you is called guanylyl transferase it is called guanylyl transferase now this guanylyl transferase will transfer this guanine base to this 5 prime phosphate okay so what will happen is something like that these two are the phosphates and x y dot dot and here will be the new phosphate from the guanine and also a guanine base this is the first kind of steps during this 5 prime capping mechanism utilizing guanylyl transferase so regular polymerase cannot achieve this we need guanylyl transferase <coughs> okay now after that we need to further modify this to make a cap zero structure what is the modification that is left here the modification that is left is the methylation of the n7 of the guanosine right so here also this guanosine n7 will be methylated so this methylation can be done utilizing methyl transferase so there are plenty of enzymes called methyl transferase or they are also called in short adomate methyl transferase or adomate now this adomate or methyl transferase they are adding methyl group to the n7 of the guanosine so ultimately the result will be like that so this is the guanosine and it is phosphate and then two different phosphates and dot dot so here will be a methylation at n7 so methylation at n7 now <coughs> after going through these modifications utilizing the enzymes nucleotide triphosphatase guanylyl transferase then methyl transferase we successfully created the cap zero structure right now remember cap zero structure is a vigorously found but also we can have cap 1 cap 2 like structures in those cases further modifications must be carried out now the further modification that is being carried out most of the case are methylation right and for the methylation in any kind of this mrna sequence we must have access to methyl transferase so again in all those further modification steps we require methyl transferase to be active now methyl transferase will keep adding this methyl group to other regions for example for the further uh, maturation 
say another methyl transferase will be required and then it produces a methyl group it attaches a methyl group to the base one so this is the base one right so it attaches a methyl group to the base one in second case suppose it attaches a methyl group to the base two in further steps will require methyl transferase for the proper methylation and the for proper modifications okay but this is a general process of doing this okay so first let's summarize so first terminal phosphate is cleaved up by nucleotide trans triphosphatase then guanosine triphosphate comes in and utilizing guanylyl transferase we are adding this utilizing the 5 prime uh, phosphate linkage then we produce the structure then methyl transferase comes in modify the guanosine base or if it required to modify further bases, it does so. Okay, so this is the whole process of how 5' uh, capping is being achieved. Okay, so I hope this video helps you. And now let us consider, uh, so just uh, before concluding, let us consider what are the importance or the significance of the 5' capping. Now the significance of the 5' capping, there is nothing more uh, to uh, to be understand in this case, so it is very much uh, common, very much conceptual answer is that uh, five prime capping, as I have told before, that it protects this five prime of the mRNA to be degraded by the exonucleases. First thing. Second thing is that this five prime capping not only protect them but also gives them the signal to be moved from nucleus to the cytoplasm. That this is the time for moving. So, there are experiments that are being done that 5' capping is not there. There are enzymes uh, modified in such a way that 5' capping cannot be took place. Now in those experiments, what scientists found is that this mRNAs, what, what are produced or transcribed inside the nucleus, stays at nucleus. They won't move to the cytoplasm. Now in turn, we can say that they lost the ability to be moved to the cytoplasm. Okay. So, for the movement, of nucleus to the cytoplasm, we need this 5' capping to the de developing or to the growing, not developing, growing mRNA. Okay. So, the pro for the proper guidance to be moved, it's important, very much important. And also, it gives the mRNA stability. Uh, so, not only being uh, from the degradation, but also it gives, it, it increases the life of mRNA in some cases. Okay. So, and, and another point. So two points major, one is the stability, second is the guidance. Third point is also this 5' capping increases the translatability of this mRNA. These are the three major points. Translatability means without this kind of capping, it can be shown that this mRNA is not that much effective in translation. So translation is not that much uh, excited to be happened in this mRNA because mRNA is acting like a template, right? So those mRNAs which are having this cap is translated quickly or with much more efficiency than those without the cap. Okay. So these are the three major significance or importance of the capping, but still it is uh, the area of active research and we have to look at it uh, utilizing the experimental views. Okay. So that's it. I hope it will help you. Thank you.